Hi, I'm Isabel. Welcome to my channel. I'm going to show you today how to sew... No. Uh. <laughs> For today's project, we're going to be using one of my favorite fast free fabrics, namely a cotton jersey with 5% of elastan. This is a really common blend to find out there in many countries and many shops, which is why I chose it. Assembling the paper pattern. I have printed my pattern on all pages. As you can see, appear a letter and a number. The letters indicate the order for the lines. So here we're starting with C's because I've used the A's and B's to print another pattern and which is also why my C2 and C4 pages are partly cut off, but it doesn't matter. That's just to explain that to stick the pages in the right order, you'll have to follow an alphabetical order for the lines and a numerical order for the columns. So the first column is always going to be about ones, the second about twos and so on. And all my patterns work that way. So I'm going to cut off some margins and I'll stick the pages in order. And finally, I'll cut out the pattern pieces. Now I cut my pieces in the fabric. And this is what I get. Here's the back, the front, the neck band, the sleeves, and here are the two strips to make the side straps to create the ruching. All right, I have my back and my front before me. And the first thing I'll do is sew my hems. My hem allowance is one centimeter. I take my Japanese ruler, I trace a line two centimeters from the edge on the wrong side of the fabric. I fold against the line, I pin, I sew with a zigzag stitch. You hem both the front and the back. I'll now lay my front and back on one another right sides together. I pin the shoulders and the sides like this. I sew the shoulders with a straight stitch and I finish the edges with my overlocker. You really want to finish the edges or else the seam allowance might curl open and create ungraceful bumps at the shoulders. Then I'll sew the sides. If your fabric is not stretchy vertically, you can sew the sides with a straight stitch. Mine is, so I'll use the zigzag stitch. And in any case, you'll want to observe two centimeters of seam allowances on the sides. There we go for the shoulder seams, edges finished, and the sides. Let's concentrate on the sides now. We're going to open the seam allowances and I'll sew the seam allowance to the bodice using a zigzag stitch. This is what the sides look like. Obviously, if you're using matching thread, it's going to look nicer, right? We have two straps on each side, so a total of four. I now take the strips, I fold them in half, I pin, and also using a zigzag stitch. Then I take my loop turner and I turn the tubes inside out. Back to the bodice, I insert the loop turner. Hook the strap. And I pull it until it reaches the armpit. I pull the second one. and I'll sew the straps in place in the seam allowance. This is the result. Now I'm going to add my sleeves. I fold them right sides together and I pin. I sew. I'm going to use a straight stitch and I finish the edges with my overlocker. I turn my top so the wrong side of the fabric is showing while my sleeves are right side out. 
I look for the notches indicating the front and the back and I pin the sleeves to the armhole. Here, you don't want to use the notches as matching indicators as they're just here to indicate the front and the back. On my other patterns, this is the case that you can match the notches, but not here. Here, you're just going to spread out the fabric across the armhole and pin and I sew using a zigzag stitch. There you go. Now it's time for the neck band. The notches are very important here, so don't forget to transfer them. I fold a rectangle right sides together, I pin and I sew using a straight stitch. This is what I get. I'll open the seam allowances and move to my ironing station. I fold in half and I press down. Once it's done, I'll pin the neck band to the neck hole right sides together. The neck band is smaller than the neck hole, so you'll have to stretch the band a bit. It's completely normal. And yes, it is a bit delicate. I used to struggle so much doing this. And it gets more difficult the thinner the jersey is. But take your time and you will see with practice you'll be more comfortable. And so using a zigzag, respecting one centimeter of seam allowance. This is what the neck looks like. Little mistake here, so I'll correct this spot. And I also finish the edges of the three layers together. Finally, I'm gonna hem my sleeves and I'm so sorry, I don't know why I didn't film this. So I'm using the footage of another project which has the same sleeves. I'm folding my sleeves on one centimeter and I sew using a zigzag stitch. And then it looks like this on this other project that, well, uh, is not exactly the QTT, but is the QTT. Why? Because I actually used the QTT and another pattern of mine, which is called the Eta skirt. I combined them both and then I made this dress. So it's kind of a good transition to talk about this dress I made. And also I wanted to tell you that for the first time I dyed fabric, like you see in the tutorial that the fabric that I'm using is a cotton jersey that is white, but then I bought some dye because I wanted some particular color that I couldn't find out there. And I dyed the fabric on my own and it was a pretty cool experience. I might do a video about this process. So go on my channel to check out or go in the description box to see if I actually put a link there to show you how to dye fabric using a particular dye, which is RIT dye. It's very easy. All right. Hope you liked it. I'll see you soon for another video. Take care. Kiss.